I want to get this off my chest and I want to be politically correct, but I feel like in order for me to be real, I just got to be real. Okay. Back in the day, if you're a woman and you're watching this, your ancestors, they didn't play that broke. Shit. If a man couldn't provide for you, he just didn't have bitches. Men that could not provide didn't have bitches. That was not a luxury for them. Men that actually had something to offer, those were the men that got married. Those were the men whose last names carried on. You have your last name because somewhere way down the line, somebody has it. So why are you laying up next to a loser, somebody that want to start a podcast, and you're eight months pregnant with his kid, and he want to be Adam 22? Are you fucking dumb? Like, are you really fucking dumb, bitch? And I mean that from the bottom of my fucking heart. I have had my fair share of dumb men, stupid, toxic relationships. I'm not better than nobody. I've walked that road. I've gone down that path. But I've never looked at a loser and said, I'm going to have his fucking kid. Like, that was never, ever, ever a thought that crossed my mind. It was bad enough that I was already caught up. It was bad enough that people already knew I was with that man, but to actually have physical evidence that at some point we were intimate together, aka a child, bitch, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy. Like y'all are sitting up here getting pregnant by people that can't even take care of themselves. He got in a relationship with you because he literally wants another mom. He has never lived alone. He can't even get an apartment in his own name. And you looked at him and said, that's just my baby daddy. Like, are you dumb? Are you serious? You are. I know you are. Look at your kid right now. I really don't understand when, like, being a mom and having kids just became, like, so casual because it's actually, like, really a big deal to, like, bring life into this world. It's, like, a huge responsibility. And I feel like more people should be, like, discerning. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not even sitting up here trying to make it seem like um, everybody that has money or everybody that's able to provide automatically qualifies as a decent parent. That's up to you, bitch. I'm not about to hold your hand and help you figure out what man will make a good dad for you. That's all you and God. That, like, literally, that ain't got nothing to do with me. What I'm saying is... Bare minimum, can he get an apartment in his name? What is his credit score, mama? Did he at least try to go to school? You got all these hopes, all these dreams, and he just laying next to you like, and you and you want to carry on that name. Because the baby doesn't get your name. The baby gets his name. That's what you want to carry on into the, like really, like for real, like this shit may sound so fucked up, but I really don't care. You want to bring a baby loser into this world. Are you serious? Are you serious? Like, it is so obvious that the woman is the one who needs to make the choice. If you choose to have your baby with a useless man, your baby is going to come out and bear the name of the useless man. If you choose to have your baby with a decent man, your baby is going to come out and bear the name of a decent man. So that was it. Let's continue. The reason why I'm making these videos for you all is because I had my daughter and I have a very, very, very generous and supportive husband. Equivalent to Gomez Adams. Obsessed. He's obsessed with me. He's obsessed with his family and that's the way that it should be and anything else that doesn't offer you that type of value don't give him a kid go back and watch this creator's video don't give him a kid that's that's one of the highest honors probably the greatest gift that you can give anyone right you could buy somebody flowers you could build them a house but to create life with them think about it she made a point but do you know what she didn't talk about what she brought to the table. She said, having a secured husband, having a man who wants to spend the rest of his life with you and your kids, he, he finds value in having a family, is the best thing in the whole wide world. But she never talked about what she brought 
to the table, what she brings to the relationship, what she brings to the marriage. I mean, oftentimes we women talk as if we are overly entitled. We are just these like uh, soft bowls, soft pearly rose flowers that they're so delicate and so fragile that needs to be protected and provided for at all costs. No matter how it costs, we need to be catered for. But we don't talk about what we need to bring to the table. If you want to be catered for, if you want to be pampered, if you want to be treated like the rose flower that you are, you need to bring something, something, you need to bring some value. She didn't talk about that. All what she said was right. But I have a problem when women like her come and talk about just the men and they don't talk about what they bring, what they put into that relationship that keeps it blooming, keeps it staying like the longevity, the longevity of the relationship depends on the man and the woman in that relationship, the man and the woman in that marriage. So for a fact, women need to start talking about what they bring to the table. I mean, really the successful women, successful marriages, successful relationships, women should be honest. They need to talk about what they put into that marriage or that long-term relationship to make it sustainable, to make it the, what it is. Let's continue. I want to be politically correct, but I feel like in order... She's absolutely right. When you think about people or grandparents, grandmothers and great-grandmothers, etc., Damien has had jobs. They were hardworking men. You know, the woman would cook and clean and take care of the kids, et cetera, et cetera. But those men were hardworking. You know what I'm saying? They deserve to come home to a hard, I mean, a hot meal, rather. They deserve that because they didn't work hard for it. I don't understand. I call these brothers the podcast Negroes. They think the only thing they can bring to the table is love. Baby, it simply just don't. You can't pay no bills with just love. It just simply don't work like that. But, uh, yeah, carry on. Good night. They didn't play that broke shit. If a man couldn't provide for you. So real quick story time about this. And not too much on my grandmother because she is deceased. Mm -hmm. But still, she was spin straight fakes. No matter how much we didn't like to hear it. So whenever one of us got like an apartment that made a major milestone, all of us would kind of gather at that person's house, you know, just to show support. And this particular cousin, she had just got her own place. And though her mama and daddy was helping her with her rent, it still was a big milestone because she was making a lot of bad decisions. And this was one of her good decisions. Now, mind you, she kept telling us, oh, let me know when Mama and Papa pull up. And, yeah, that was because she had her little guy friend over there. But I don't remember if she was trying to hide him or, like, why exactly she wanted us to tell her when Momo and Papa was pulling up. But, nonetheless, Momo and Papa pulled up. Um, You know, we greeted them, done our hugs and kisses. She gave them the apartment tour, and then they sat down on the sofa. So, that was when my grandmother noticed her little friend. So, she was like, baby, who are you? So he introduced himself as my cousin Frank, and my grandmother said Frank. So my cousin was like, "Mama, that's my boyfriend." So she said, "Oh, baby, are you aware my granddaughter just had a baby, and you ain't the daddy?" So he was like, "Yes, ma'am." She said, "You aware this apartment ain't free? It costs money every month. It's called rent." He said, "Yes, ma'am." She said, "Oh, so in that case, you, you a provider? Oh, okay, okay. What you do for a living?" He said, "Well, I'm in between jobs right now." She said, hold on, because I know I'm not over the times, but I was in a workforce for 30 some my years. I ain't never heard that term in between jobs, what that is. So he said, well, something happened on my other job, and so I got let go, and right now I'm looking for one. She said, oh, so you unemployed. You should have just said you unemployed or you ain't got no job. So she said, baby, let me ask you something. In that moment, my cousin goes to intervene, and my grandmother hit her with one of these. And she said, back down. 
My grandmother said, baby, when me and my husband was coming here, like at that corner, there's a gas station. Can you go over there and give me a Coca-Cola? I have acid reflux and that help. And yeah, I know it's acid reflux. Not too much on my grandmother. That's how she used to say it. So he said, yes, ma'am. But he never got up and moved. So my grandmother went on chit-chatting with us until she noticed he never moved and was like, baby, why you haven't went and got my Coca-Cola? So he said, oh, because I was waiting for the money. It was at this moment that my cousin got up and walked to the back of the apartment. My grandmother said, what money? He said, the, the money to buy the Coca-Cola. My grandmother said, baby, a Coca-Cola at, at this time, they was like a dollar, dollar fifty at the most. So she was like, baby, they ain't nothing but a dollar, dollar fifty. So he said, yes, ma'am, I know. So she said, so you trying to tell me you don't have a dollar, dollar fifty? So he said, not at this time. So she called my cousin from the bank and she said, tell your boyfriend to go and get you a Coca-Cola from that gas station. So she said, Momo, you serious right now? She said, what did I just say? So my cousin Momo go get me a Coca-Cola from the gas station. So he said, well, where the stamp card is? My grandmother sat back and chuckled a little bit. She turned to my cousin and said, baby, if you wanted a dog, me and your grandfather could have stopped over there at the pound and picked one up. Because this man ain't got a pot to piss in, a window to throw it out of, nor a dollar fifty to buy a Coca-Cola. What can he do for you and your newborn daughter over there up in their room? I ain't gonna lie. We was sniggling and giggling. We, we was immature. But more of the story, my grandmother was spitting straight facts. That dude, of course, went on to use her, mooch off of her, manipulate her, led her to make, you know, a lot of negative life choices. And yeah, even though I was sitting there, they talk. It still resonates with me to this day, even though I've made bad choices when it comes to me. But my grandfather, my grandmother has always made it known that my grandfather couldn't come check for her if he wasn't the type of provider that he was. So yeah, what my girl's saying in this video is straight facts. Because <laughs> it wasn't even about the Coca-Cola. It was the fact that my boy, she got a baby. She got rent clearly is she bringing this whole apartment to the table and what are you bringing baby you can't even bring a coke <laughs> that's why i had to catch myself i used to be up in here crying over me who ain't had two pennies to rub together but in my sprinkle sprinkle voice i had stockholm syndrome i'm carrying out of